Elaborate on the age of Hazrat Aisha, at time of her marriage to the Holy Prophet. So the question is, can a speaker elaborate on the age of Hazrat Aisha at the age of her time of marriage to the Holy Prophet? Please be upon She was around 18, 19 years of age. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> but I can prove it. It is categorically established in historical accounts that Hazrat Aisha was 10 years younger than her elder sister, who was Asma. And it is also categorically established that Hazrat Asma died at the age of 73, died at the age of 100 in 73 Hijra. 73 years after the migration, Hazrat Asma passed away and she was 100 years of age. Which means that in the first year of migration, she was 27 years of age. So that would mean that Hazrat Aisha was 27, subtract 10, 17 years of age when the Holy Prophet migrated to Medina. And her marriage took place in 2 Hijri and that would put her at 18. So Hazrat Aisha was 18 years of age when she married the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. There are other narrations which substantiate that she was around 15 and 16. Now you may ask, well, how can you have one categorical response and then also have another possibility? So it is possible. Because at the time in Arabia there was no birth certificates, there was no registrar for births, everything was approximate. So we have to work on approximate figures. And historians have to come to conclusions based on putting together pieces of the puzzle. And if we put together different pieces of the puzzle, we will find that Hazrat Aisha was more around 18, 19 years of age when she was married to the Holy Prophet. If, if we were to accept, one thing is for sure, she was definitely not nine years of age when she married the Holy Prophet. Whatever age she was, it was an age, even if we are to accept that she was younger than 18 or 19, it was an age where she had attained the full age of maturity, where she was able to be married. She was not a child who had not yet matured and was not able to be married. You see, one thing which we often are guilty of doing, and I do it sometimes myself as well, but now I've come to realize that our greatest mistake is that if we try and analyze one society based on another society who has different values and who has different different circumstances which revolve around the societal makeup of a certain community. For us to compare the current day, what we consider to be modern, with pre-Islamic Arabian history of 1400 years ago is like comparing apples and oranges. We just can't do it. Every society has its norms. What was norm in British society 100 years ago isn't the norm today. In Britain, it was very normal for women to be married at the age of 14 or 15 years of age. And I would like to present a very interesting point. I found, I was reading an article, and I found that somebody has compiled a very interesting statement. The Catholic Encyclopedia says, Mother Mary of Jesus was 11, and Joseph was 90 upon their marriage. This is the Catholic Encyclopedia, an international reference of work on the Constitution, Doctrine, Discipline, and History of the Catholic Church, published in New York, Robert Appleton Company, Volume 8, page 505. If somebody doesn't believe me, I'll give you the reference. So what does this establish? It, establish, it, it establishes that different people of different societies have different norms. And if something is done according to the norm, it's not wrong. Now, people raise the objection that Hazrat Aisha was married at, even if we were to accept that she was married at age 13 or 14, this is very young for a 13, 14 year old to marry a 55 year old man. But does anybody realize 
that the Holy Prophet وسلم, wedded off his own daughters at the same age? And her husbands were also similar in their difference of age. It was a custom, a general practice in Arabia for women to be married off when they reached the age of maturity. And in the Arabian desert, in those eras, in that era, girls used to be mature at the age of 13, 14. And even in our society, maybe a hundred years ago in India or Pakistan, for example, if a girl was unmarried at the age of 15, people would start to raise fingers and say that, why isn't she married yet at the age of 20? There must be something wrong with her. So these are norms of different societies. The Holy Prophet ﷺ married off his own daughters at the similar age that he married Hazrat Aisha. If God forbid he had lustful intentions or was God forbid the P word, I don't want to use it. If he had ill intentions toward children, why would he give his own daughters to Uthman who at the same age? Why would Hazrat Umar who offered to wed off his daughter to Hazrat Abu Bakr when she was about the same age and Hazrat Abu Bakr was quite old at the time? Because these were norms, these were general customs and practices which were accepted at the time. And another thing, I find it very interesting that today, after 1400 years have passed, People sit as if they are a appealing cross-examination jury to judge whether the Holy Prophet Wasallam's action was correct or wrong without taking into account the circumstances of that era 1400 years ago. Why is it that today people raise objections and advocate the rights of Hazrat Aisha anhu as if they are the only ones who love Hazrat Aisha and Muslims are, God forbid, a very insensitive towards her. Why is it that Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha never objected to this marriage? She lived with the Holy Prophet many years, but she never objected. Okay, somebody might say that well, she was fearful of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. How could she object? She was forced. She was a, a, a she was forced into the marriage. Well, she lived many many years after the demise of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, but not once did she ever state that her life with the Holy Prophet was unpleasant. Then, forget that. The, Ara the Arabs of the time would spare no opportunity to defame the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. The Arabs, the Quraysh in particular, were always on the lookout for a certain opportunity to take hold of the Holy Prophet and raise an objection against him. They never raised an objection against this marriage of Hazrat Aisha either. Why? Because it was general custom of society for women to be wed at the age of 14, 15 because that is when they reach the age of maturity. I have another reference here where it is stated that even today in certain Western countries, in California for example, there is no minimum age for marriage. So to single out Islam and state that Islam teaches child abuse, God forbid, is a grave injustice. We cannot compare apples and oranges. What was done in that society was done because it was the norm. The Holy Prophet also acted the same way. The Holy Prophet treated his wife so beautifully that after his demise, they would weep at the memory of their beloved master. If they had been committed to, if they had been subjected to cruelty and injustice, they would never have remembered the Holy Prophet ﷺ in, in such a loving tone. So, if we put all of these things into perspective, we see that the marriage of Hazrat Aisha was in such an age, at such an age, where it was permissible and absolutely appropriate for her to be married. She never objected, her parents never objected, the Arabs who were all out to get the Holy Prophet ﷺ and object to him, they never objected, and even, forget about 1400 years ago, even 100 years ago in the Middle Eastern continent, even in Britain, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, girls used to be wed off at very tender ages. They used to be wed off at young ages. The requirement of marriage is when a woman reaches the age of maturity, and that can be different in different places. It's scientifically and medically proven that women mature at a much later age in such countries where the climate is cold. 
because their body begins to develop at a slower rate. But in such countries where the climate is very hot and spices are used to a high degree, this begins to move their development phase quicker than in other countries. So if the age of maturity in Arabia is younger than in Britain, then this is not a, a opportunity to object because we must analyze society based on its values. We must analyze the goodness of a society based on its norms. And if something is different to what we consider to be true or correct in this day and age, doesn't necessarily mean that that's wrong and this is right. It could mean that this is right and that's right as well. And this is what we should do. We should give regard to different societies and respect the different customs of different peoples, especially when no objection has ever been raised in the history of that marriage. Not in the era of the Holy Prophet, not directly after his era, only today recently British scholars and Western scholars have raised an objection. But even then, I've given you references and quotations which substantiate that her age was much older than nine years of age as, most, as Western scholars allege.